try! It's this week with more doubt over whoever's in next, uh, next season. Yeah, I think doubt is probably the, the way we've sort of pushed on to deal with it and that we don't know anything. So it hasn't changed for us any situation. Um, so we're just preparing for the Brumbies. Unfortunately, uh, that's the truth of it. We, there's only one thing that we can control, and that's our performance this weekend. Yes, there is doubt, but it hasn't changed that doubt that has been bubbling away in the background for the whole season, pretty much. So we just continue to, to keep preparing for the game. We've got enough problems trying to win a game at the moment, so we're pretty confident that we're, that is probably the smart way of concentrating our players' efforts and the coaches as well. Morgan, the ARU have extended the, the time frame in terms of decision. Is that, do you disagree with that? Agree? Do you care? I think the Rebels, as a group, would have been pretty happy for the ARU to come out and go, well, the Rebels are guaranteed. But uh, I think in the situation they're in, it's understandable that the amount of time it takes to make the correct decision is the right amount of time. Uh, sooner is always better for the human element involved in this. But um, if they get the right decision in, in, in their eyes done, and that's the right amount of time for them. Are you content with the way the ARU have handled the whole situation? I don't have all the information. So, uh, I, I, you know, people way above my pay grade are deciding. Um, we've had a pretty close view of our own destiny on the field. As an assistant coach of a footy team, that's all I've pretty much had to worry about. Um, I've had enough problems trying to unlock the very good Brumbies defence, so I've been worried about that. Um, I'll let the powers that be sort it out. We're pretty confident the Rebels will be here, but we've been confident a month ago, we were confident six months ago. I was confident when I signed on. There's no real reason for me that that should change. Uh, but also being very aware that there is a human element this for the players of both the Force and the Rebels. Aside from the way to unlock the Brumbies defence, what advice have you given to the players on how to handle this week? Um, my thing personally has been control the controllables. Uh, I've been involved in some high pressure situations with footy. Um, I was actually involved in a French club that folded due to money problems. So I think the big lesson I learnt there was just to keep my head down and control the things I can control. My job, the players' job, preparing for a game of Super Rugby. It wouldn't be a terrible thing to win this Saturday. I don't think it is as simple as that, but winning is never a bad thing for both the Rebels as an organisation and the greater picture for both of our fans, our families and, and the team itself. Do you feel a little bit like you're being undermined by the AIU? I don't think undermined is the word. Uh, I think they, they came out and explained over a long period of time yesterday why they felt they needed to do it. Um, as I said, they've probably, they probably got a lot more information at their fingertips than we have here at the Coalface about why they do those sorts of decisions. Uh, they've got some, some really big responsibilities Australia-wide. They felt they had to make a change. Whether or not I agree or not, it's a moot point. Um, you know, the more rugby players playing rugby in Australia, the better. Whether they think that means that investing in grassroots and having less super rugby teams will, will benefit that. The Wallabies winning is important, super rugby being strong. Uh, the ARU board and, and, and Bill Culver, that's what they're there for, to drive and direct the game. Um, until I get uh, voted onto the board, then I won't have to worry about that. Does Saturday, I mean, does it take on an increased significance in terms of crowd size or in terms of performance or anything like that? I would hope not. I, would, uh, I think uh, Cameron Klein and Bill Poole were quite clear in that you know, they're looking at financial sustainability and the ability for the, both the Rebels, the Force, the Brummies, the Reds and Warrantos to deliver a high performance system that delivers results on the field. Um, the short term um, sort of views of things, uh, of it hinging on a, on a one performance, um, I think is probably not on their radar. As I said, it never hurts to win games. Uh, for the Rebels, you know, we've had a poor start to the season. Maybe that hasn't helped us, but I think that in, in the black and white objective way that they'll look at it, that there'll be many other sort of bigger deciders at play than, than this weekend's uh, result. You talk about the human element of play as well. Who do you most feel for in this situation? Is it fans, players, people in Perth? You know, where does your heart go? I think everyone. I think uh, for the players and staff, it's probably easier for us. I suppose families as well. Uh, they've got no control over it. Um, you know, they've got families, I saw Matt Hodgson obviously talking about moving his family to Perth, creating a life. That's the human element to it. Um, I, I think, you know, people at the Rebels and the Force, that they've got people that have come from other places to make a commitment to the clubs. Uh, I think that's a, that's a really strong thing and that is the human element. Also the fans that, that, that put that emblem of ours on their chest to come and watch us play. Uh, they want us to give them something back with the victory this week. They've wanted better from us this year. Uh, I think if we can focus on the process of putting in a good performance and repaying the faith and support that those fans who have been hurt by some of this stuff that's been going around, that'd be a great thing. The Force did that on the weekend and we need to do it for our guys as well. More with, than... with the game this weekend, how, how difficult would it be for finals if you guys couldn't get over the line? Do you think that'd probably be it for the... 
maths was never my strong point at Waverley <laughs> College. Look, look, not having won a game this far in round eight of the season doesn't help. Uh, yes, the Australian conference is tighter than the other conferences, so mathematically it wouldn't be over. I think if you can't beat the other people in your conference, then you know it's double. As I mentioned before, it's almost like playing for double points, depriving the opposition of four and getting four yourself. This is an important game. I think when you have the win-loss record that we have at the start of the season, it's, it's uh, a bit presumptuous to be talking about finals footy. Uh, I think, though, it's a cliche that if we can put in a performance for 80 minutes that we can be proud of, I think we may well get the result that we desire. But in saying that, I think the process of playing well for 80 is something we need to get done before we get on the plane to Africa to really fix our season. Morgan, you've played around Australia and around the world. Just a broader question on the Rebels. What do you feel the potential for this club is um, from what you've seen so far in terms of coverage in Melbourne and scope in Australia? Well, the potential is limitless. The potential here in a, in a growing city like Melbourne, we don't need to take on the AFL. We can be that other niche market. Of, but we can be everyone's team. We don't have, we're not going against Colin, we're not going against the Melbourne Demons. Uh, so it's, it's not, I don't think it's the, the limits to the market or, or where things can go with the Rebels. I think our timing's probably a bit unlucky with the way the game is, global economic markets, the way sport is viewed. I think some of the points that the, that the AU have put forward are, are quite salient points, unemotive, salient, uh, uh, valid points about the state of the game. They felt they needed to make this change. Now this change is happening. Uh, we need to find a way to make sure that the Rebels are part of that environment moving forward. And we are very convinced, both players, staff and people around the club, that this club can be here for a long time and do great things in Melbourne. We Is are the Melbourne Rebels. We're not, we're, not, uh, we're not named after a sponsor. We haven't lost our Melbourne. We're not a province. We're not a state. We're the city of Melbourne's rugby team. Um, and it's, it's about time that we probably started putting a performance on the field that the people of Melbourne can grab a hold of and be proud of, pay back some of the great loyalty we've had from our fans and prove to other people that may be doubting us that, that we do have a place here. Is there a big risk fans might not take Waibaba? I wouldn't think so. I know rugby fans all around the world, they're, they're very passionate, very loyal fans. Uh, they've stuck with us with, a, with, with, a, with not the best start to the year and I fully expect them to, to stick with us on, uh, until there is no longer a, a Rebels logo running on the field, whether that's 100 years from now, whether it's never or, or whatever happens. Uh, the great thing about rugby fans is they've had to be resilient, and thus they are. Thanks,